Hello everyone, this video is going to focus on special triangles, and with special triangles, um, I mean two types. I'm not going to go per se into where all the values come from for the sides, but rather just simply these are the numbers, and how do you use what you know about special triangles to figure out missing sides? As stated before, there are two types. And they're named, by the way, for their angles. So the first type, the 45, 45, 90 triangle, and the other type being the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Let's first focus on the 45, 45, 90 triangle. You'll know it by the fact that one of the angles, at least one, will say 45 degrees, and of course the 90 degree angle. It'll be understood that you know that the second angle is 45 degrees as well. Uh, another way would be like this, where you have the right angle, but then two of the legs here are the same length. They're congruent. You should know then that these angles are 45 as well, because recall that if you have two sides equal in a triangle, then two angles must be equal as well. And they would be the two base angles, in that these two angles are opposite um, the two sides. So here and here. Now, again, the two smaller legs are equal to each other, so we'll call them x. The third side, the hypotenuse, is going to be whatever the uh, smaller side there is times the number of root 2. This can be easily established using the Pythagorean theorem. You can go x squared plus x squared is equal to c squared and then solve for c. But the main idea for this is the root 2. What separates the smallest side from the largest side is a factor of root 2. It's just a matter of whether you're multiplying or dividing. In a nutshell, if you're trying to figure out the smaller sides, which are the legs, you're going to divide. If you're trying to determine the hypotenuse, which is the largest side, you will multiply. Let us do an example. Let's say that you're to determine here the value of x. Now, first of all, you should recognize that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Here, the 90 degree angle is not labeled, but since both of these are 45 degrees, it's pretty obvious that the third angle is a right angle. Here's what you'll want to consider is x the smallest side in the triangle? If so, you're going to divide. Now, is that the smallest side? The hypotenuse typically is the largest side, and the reason being is because the biggest angle, 90 degrees, is opposite the largest side. That's typically the side angle relationship. Also, please note that the right angle is actually pointing at it for you. It's pointing at the largest side, and that's always the case. And then it's by what number? Well, it's the square root of 2. And that's the number, essentially, for the 45, 45, 90 triangle. The only number you got is 5. So again, the decision is, do you multiply or do you divide? Since the largest side is what we're going after, we're going to multiply, because typically multiplying by numbers gives you a larger answer. Therefore, 5 times the square root of 2 is your solution. Alrighty, let's try another. In this particular case, we know this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle because it is isosceles. So again, let's determine x here, and that is it the smallest side or is it the largest side? x is the largest side. Again, please note that the right angle points at the largest side. So that means we're going to be multiplying. And the question is, what do you multiply by? 13 is the only number you got, so you'll multiply it by root 2, which is the magic number, essentially, for this triangle. And that's it. Let's do another. Again, let's determine which side's small, which one's large. Small is x. Therefore, if you want to get the uh, smaller side, we're going to have to divide instead of multiply this time. So take your 15 and divide by the square root of 2. Now, normally this would be it, except for one little problem. We typically do not finish answers with radicals 
in the denominator. Therefore, we will rationalize that denominator by multiplying by this radical on the top and on the bottom. In doing so, what you get is just 15 times the square root of 2 on top, and on the bottom, root 2 times root 2, which is just simply 2. And that's all there is to that. Let's do one more 45, 45, 90 triangle. Again, identify large side and small side. Recall that the large side is the hypotenuse, so the small side would be one of the two legs. And by the way, the small sides are always going to be adjacent to this right angle. They're going to be attached. So small side, we need to divide. Go ahead and take 24, divide by the square root of 2, and that would be it, except, again, we have this radical on the bottom, so we're going to need to rationalize that denominator, because right now it's irrational. Multiplying by the square root of 2 on the top and on the bottom, and uh, we are left with 24 root 2 on top and just 2 on the bottom. Now, unlike in the previous problem, we can actually reduce this one here. 24 and 2 reduce to give you 12 and 1. Recall that uh, you cannot reduce a number in the radical with one that's outside of the radical, just as you cannot multiply outside with inside. But if both values are on the outside, it's okay to do that. So 12 root 2 is your solution. Now what about the 30, 60, 90 triangle? Because there are three different angles, you're going to have three different side lengths here. So everything is kind of dependent on what the smallest side is, and identifying the smallest side is going to be key. Whatever that value is, the hypotenuse is going to be twice the length. The other leg is going to be root 3 times larger. Here's a little map here, or diagram, if you want to interpret. So from the smallest side, if you double it, you get the largest side. If you multiply it to root 3, you get the medium side. And just for the record, 2 is bigger than the square root of 3, even though you're thinking, hey, 3, 3 is bigger than 2. If uh, you don't believe me, you can type in the square root of 3 into your calculator, or just keep in mind that root 3 is less than root 4. And what's the square root of 4? So in a nutshell, this is what you need to consider. The first thing you'll want to do for any of these triangles is just determine which side's a small one, which one's the largest one, and which one's the medium side. Once you've made that distinction, determine the small side first. And you'll typically do that by dividing. Now, you'll want to do this first no matter what you're asked for, even if you're, at, if you're not asked to determine the length of that side. If you're already given the length of that side, then you just simply skip this step. After you do that, then you determine the medium side or the large side. For medium, remember, you're going to use the square root of 3. And for the large side, you're going to use the value of 2. And what you'll do is you'll multiply by these values. And you'll multiply them to whatever the small side is. Here's an example. Let's determine x and y for this one. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll identify which side is the smallest Hopefully you recognize that it is a 60 degree angle here because 30, then 60, then 90, they all total 180 degrees. 30 degrees is the smallest angle. If you were to draw an arrow out, you would determine which side was the smallest. Opposite the smallest angle is always the smallest side. Since the hypotenuse is the largest side, x will be large, and therefore that makes y the medium side. So now that, we want, now that we've done that, we want to determine the length of the small side. And notice that's already done, 14. So we can just go ahead and skip to this next step here, which is now we can determine the medium side and the large side. Everything is based on the small side, so we, we use 14. For the large side, the number you use is 2. So multiply, 14 times 2. And you get 28. That's really it. As for y, the medium side, again, use that small side, 14. And since root 3 is what you use, multiply by root 3. 
and that finishes that problem. Let's try another. Okay, same process here. Let's determine which side small, which one's medium, which one's large. Please note this angle is 30 degrees because this must total 180. So if you have 60 here, you have 90 here. What's left? Opposite the smallest angle is the smallest side. The right angle is pointing at the largest side. That leaves Y as your medium side. So now in this particular case we want to determine the small side. We don't have that so let's go ahead and do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide. The only number we have in this triangle and we focus on the sides only is 22. 22 is a large side so you're going to use the number 2. Now the question is this, do you multiply by 2 or do you divide by 2? If you multiply by 2 you're going to get 44 and you have to think to yourself is 44 smaller than 22? Obviously not, so we divide by 2. Remember that whenever you want to determine the small side, you're going to always divide. It's just a matter of whether you divide by 2 or whether you divide by the square root of 3. You had the large side, that's why we used 2. And we get 11, and that's it. Now let's turn our attention here to the medium side. Recall that the number we use for medium is the square root of 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the square root of 3. The question is to which number? You multiply it to 11. And the reason we don't use 22 is simple. Everything depends on the smaller side. When you multiply to the smaller side, you're going to get a number that's larger. So that's why we want to get this smaller side first. Now is there a value that you can use that can enable you to go from the large side to the medium? Yes, there is, but um, I, I'd rather avoid it for this only because it, it, uh, it can be unnecessarily difficult for people. So uh, just stick to this little uh, paradigm here, and that is get the small side first, multiply to get one of the other two, and you're good. Let's do another. This time, just determine x. Let's go by the uh, same steps. There is small, medium, and large. Recall that, recall that the uh, smallest side is opposite the smallest angle. Now, even though x is the largest side, we're going to need to determine the value of the smallest side first. Therefore, we're going to take the 7 root 3, which is the only number we've got, and we will divide. And since it's the medium side, you will divide by the square root of 3. Now in this particular case the root 3's reduce out and you are left with 7. Now that we have the value of the smallest side we can then go ahead and get the largest side. The number you use for large is 2 and since we're getting bigger you're going to multiply by 2 not divide. So take the 7 multiply by 2 and we get 14 and that is our solution. How about we try one more determine x and y. Just as before, determine your small, medium, and large sides. Hopefully by now you kind of have a grasp of how to do this. Just use the angles as a guide. 90 degrees is the largest angle, opposites the largest side. 60 degrees is the medium angle, opposites the medium side. 30 degrees is the smallest angle, and opposite is the smallest side. The small side is what you want first, so we're going to need to determine the value of x. 18 is the only value we have, and it's the medium side. The number we use for the medium side is the square root of 3. So the question is this, now that I know what number to use, do I multiply or divide by it? Recall that you will divide if you're trying to determine the smallest side. So that's 18 over the square root of 3, and let's go ahead and rationalize that. That's multiplying the square root of 3 top and bottom. You get 18 root 3 on top, and just 3 on the bottom. And here you'll notice we can reduce. 18 and 3 does reduce to give you 6 on top and 1 on the bottom. So 6 root 3 is our solution to x, the smallest side. Now let's get that large side. To determine that, we're going to need to use the small side, which is the reason why we get it first. 
Recall that the magic number for the large is 2, so we are going to, since we're getting bigger, we're going to multiply by 2. And to do that, you just simply go 2 times 6. So 2 times 6 is 12. 12 root 3 is your solution. And that does it. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.